Well, hello there. Uh, breakfast with Broker every Tuesday morning. Uh, listen, uh, this is pretty beautiful over here. It's in Montana, and uh, that's why I got my fishing jacket on and such. So, um, uh, it, you know, we have a real exciting guest, and I didn't miss this opportunity to bring this guest to you. Uh, she is, and uh, well, 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 we'll give her a nice intro. And now, for, by way of Washington, D.C., she is a senior economist and director of forecasting for the National Association of Realtors. She's been involved in research and analysis about local housing affordability conditions and local solutions to increase housing inventory. Inventory. She also studies the effects of federal policies on the real estate market. She is Nadia Evangelou. Hi, Dave. Thank you for the great introduction. <laughs> Thank you. How are you? Good morning, Nadia. How are you? Good, good. I'm not in such good. a beautiful environment as you are. <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm very sorry. Yeah, it, it, it is pretty and uh, really, really nice. So, uh, you know, uh, thank you for coming on and I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, so many people talk about how the, how the market is and what, what's the market doing. And guess what? You're an expert in that. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. So, so the, the question I have for you is: to be how's the market? Business. <laughs> yes, agreed. It's a, it's a, it's a great business, and um, if I do have a lag or technology's, uh, you know, connection is a little uh, uh, low, uh, I apologize. But hopefully, you'll hear Nadia. You don't want to hear me. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> how, how's the market, Nadia? Oh, uh, yeah. So, Dave, uh, in a nutshell, housing market is outperforming. Uh, housing recovery um, is truly remarkable and far beyond our expectations. Uh, like, for example, back in April, we were talking about a possible V-shaped recovery for the housing market. And we were expecting like home sales to decline 15% under the most optimistic uh, scenario. Like three months later, existing and uh, new home sales ramped up to a higher than pre-pandemic level. And um, specifically in July and June, existing home sales rose to a, a very strong pace, a month or over month pace of like uh, average 20%. And um, while new home sales rose to 900,000, like, uh, which is a level that is also higher than the pre-pandemic level. And actually we are currently, like we are releasing right now the existing home sales for August, which also shows, it will show, I cannot, it's like a 10. So because of the embargo, I can see that it's just 10. Um, so I cannot release uh, the August uh, figures. However, I can give you a hint that um, we expect home sales to continue to rise this upward trending. Um, so based on the data, uh, it seems that buyers hit the post button during the spring months. So we actually skipped spring housing market, uh, but there is a very strong rebound in the summer and we expect also strong activity to continue in the fall and winter. Thus, um, in 2020, we will have strong summer, fall and winter activity instead of the spring and summer season, which is what we uh, typically have, like in the normal, uh, normal years. We uh, actually track some housing indicators on a weekly uh, basis. Um, since market conditions change very fast, uh, I think that it's better to track um, these indicators week by week instead of monthly. So one of the indicators that we track is the change of the new pending contracts, specifically contract signings, which are represent pending sales. In the mid of September, we're up uh, 23 percent from one year ago and this is a very important indicator since it shows that there is a very strong pent up demand for housing uh, in the meantime uh, we see that new listings were up from one year ago uh, by three percent year over year however we see that contract signings outpacing listings and so uh, more construction is needed to um, uh, so supply can keep up with the increased housing demand thus we have the same challenge this year again that uh, that we had like pre-pandemic, not enough inventory to meet uh, the increased housing demands. 
Um, moreover, we see that home showings picked up in August. Uh, according to data uh, from CentraLog, home showings were up for the second time since February at 20 percent uh, in August and represents the largest like year over year increase um, since uh, I think it was October 2017. Uh, so at the regional level, uh, showings were up in West um, by almost like 30 percent in South, um, 16%, in the Midwest, and 15%. Um, we also track uh, the public interest for open houses uh, as an indicator about um, indicator for housing demand. So we get um, uh, we get that although the interest is lower than last year, more and more people search for open houses on a weekly basis um, since the since the beginning of the pandemic, like since April. Uh, based on the data, interest rose about 100% in the last four months. So um, from pending uh, home sales to the interest and the purchase applications, what we see that are increasing, buyers are back in business and homes are selling very fast. And the main reason, of course, is the ultra low mortgage rates. And last week, the 30 year fixed rate stabilized in near record lows at uh, 2.87 percent uh and this i would like to talk a little bit about the rates if you don't mind so uh, yeah of course what we, we expect so as i mentioned the 30 years stabilized to a level below three percent in the meantime the fed announced that they uh, they will hold interest rates uh, steady at near zero percent uh, through probably 2023 thus we expect also longer periods with cheap mortgages and stronger uh, labor market, which is very good news for um, home buyers and homeowners who want to refinance. Um, but I would like to speak a little bit about Florida, about the housing in Florida. To have, well, I uh, was, <clears throat> was going to ask you, you know, the specific yeah. areas, you know, that seem to be going up, are there specific areas? Um, and one of those areas, obviously, uh, you know, where I live in South Florida, uh, seems to be a, a crazy market. And I speak to a mm -hmm. lot of people and some people have amazing markets and, and some have declining. Ha, you know, can you just talk a little bit about, you know, California and New York? Um, I don't know if you've uh, looked at the uh, housing numbers for California and New York. Are they similar to, are they outpacing? Are they, at, you know, the uh, national average or are they, they, they tend to come uh, down a little bit? I don't know. No, for New York, that's the issue. For New York, we don't have, we don't have, we don't see the rebound that we see for the other and uh, areas. So, especially for New York, we have the, uh, still declines on the activity uh, based on the latest data. So, um, New York, because of um, because it was hit like from uh, the COVID, um, uh, like very bad. So that was one of the reasons that the economy is not back so some of the businesses are reopening but it's still um we we see that new york is not there yet like um but that's why okay. I, yeah. the only reason why i asked you and i'm sorry i should probably should have asked you before <laughs> and not put you on the spot but uh uh you know okay um we we see a lot more people obviously from new york we always saw that in you know coming to south florida uh, mm -hmm. but we're seeing a lot more people from california um, yeah. which to us is, uh, t you know, not necessarily uh, typical um, with our market. You know, we usually see, you know, people from the Northeast and Canada and, and, and you know, and, and abroad, but we don't typically see, you know, people moving from West to East. So, you know, I didn't know if uh, you had those numbers in, in California. If not, it's, it's not a big deal. We could talk more about Florida. Yeah, so uh, one, uh, uh, I took, uh, I recently came across with some data like migration uh, patterns uh, about the renters and we saw indeed that there is Florida, for example, there is um, uh, an increase and for Palm Beach, uh, for uh, no, for Miami, uh, it, uh, we see an increase um, uh, that most of the searches uh, from renters to move to the area is from New York. And of course, we also see from the migration patterns that we have so far that people tend to move to less dense, um, more affordable and uh, areas. So that's one of the reasons that we can see with California as well. So that's the main reason, I think. And 
less risk, like uh, compared to California in Florida performs better. Is affordability going to be an issue coming up? Yes. Yes. And that's one of the main reasons with the low mortgage rates, of course, affordability rises and specifically in um, Florida, I think rose about 8%. Uh, and in Miami more, I think uh, it's about 12% that it rose compared to a year earlier. So that's very good news. And that's one of the reasons that people move from other areas. So affordability plays a very important role on uh, during the pandemic now, because we have like, of course, one of the largest cohorts of home buyers are uh, millennials. So we see many trends of the millennials moving around. Uh, specifically, they move to areas with good um, uh, employment conditions like uh, uh, strong job growth uh, compared relative to the other areas like we can see like Utah, for example. Um, for Florida, of course, it's one of the areas for not uh, millennials, but for older um, uh, for uh, older ages, like in the age groups like 65 and more. And that's good because, again, some of them, they decide to retire, for example, why to stay downtown in D.C., for example, and work and not to retire and be in Florida. And also we see a, a trend. Uh, we expect areas with uh, many vacation homes to outperform. And Florida is one of these uh, states. Like, um, as far as I remember, it's like, 10% of uh, the inventory in Florida, 10% uh, um, uh, is um, uh, uh, vacation homes that they're used like for recreation um, and seasonal use uh, purposes and compared to 4%, which is nationwide. Wow. Yeah, yeah. so uh, certainly outpacing. Um, you know, we have about a thousand people, at least that's what I, I read. Uh, it was a thousand people a day now uh, moving mm -hmm. to Florida. You know, and, and you talk about the millennials, you know, what millennials want, and, and they're finally getting, you know, out, not totally out, but a lot of them are getting out of the rental market um, and going into the, you know, purchasing new homes. And, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, where we might have thought that might have happened three, four years ago. Now it's coming to fruition because of the low interest rates and stuff. And I think most of what they're looking for is walkability scores, right? You know, uh, near parks. You know, they want a lifestyle. You know, they're not looking for necessarily the bigger homes, but they're looking for the home and the location that they want. And like you said, uh, uh, you know, job growth is a must. Yeah, now I think pandemic can change a little bit the, the these dynamics because they can move to more affordable less dense areas like maybe they will not move maybe they will uh, prefer for example Nashville Tennessee for instead of moving somewhere else like a bigger city with more parks or something but we see that because of the affordability and they can work remotely at the same time since based on the data is um, millennials where the age group that represent most of them to to work like remotely so that's the age group that uh, works um, uh, mostly remotely uh, i think it was about 40 something percent of uh, the millennials uh, work remotely during the pandemic so this can change the dynamics so uh, they can move to suburbs because it's more affordable and they don't need to be like downtown Awesome. Well, yeah. uh, Nadia, I mean, you know, you, you really gave a lot of information uh, for the market and and, and such, and uh, we certainly appreciate it. I know uh, your time is very valuable, and uh, we thank you for, you know, letting us know that, you know, in six months a year that, you know, it still looks like the housing um, affordability, you know, it may still be an issue, uh, but, yeah. uh, you know, we're looking uh, hopefully for a robust market. Uh, I guess the last question I, I would ask you is um, same question I ask all my guests mm -hmm. is um, what's your well first of all hopefully you watch uh, some streaming shows so what's your favorite streaming show like a Netflix uh, series or such and what are you currently watching oh <laughs> to tell you the truth I don't have so much time I have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, congratulations. So I'm more in cheesy movies and the cheesy show. So uh, it was something Chesapeake Shores, something that, that my, the show that I was watching on Netflix. <laughs> but I'm trying to find <laughs> <them> still. <laughs> yeah. Well, fair enough. 
Nadia, mm -hmm. um, you, you're a wealth of information. Uh, hopefully we can count on you, uh, you know, maybe six months or a year from now to see, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if the housing uh, predictabilities uh, are, are working in our favor as well. So thank you so much. Every uh, every Tuesday, Breakfast with the Broker. Today's a special edition because we're all the way from Montana. It's actually kind of pretty here. I'll, I'll just show you just kind of a little. Wow. Just on my deck. It's, uh, it's, it's really, really pretty. And there's a you can't see, but there was a bald eagle out there. That was pretty cool. Anyway, uh, from Montana, I promise I'll be in a suit uh, next Tuesday. Uh, but uh, I hope all is well. Thanks, Nadia. Thank Have you, Dave. Day. You Take too. Care. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs>